Welcome to the Superstar Communicator Show. My name is Susan Heaton Wright. I'm a vocal coach and communications trainer. Through listening to this podcast, my goal is to ensure you never ever be underestimated, ignored, interrupted, or undervalued again. Listen fortnightly as I share proven tips and strategies to ensure you develop charisma and make an impact with your voice and physical presence. Make sure to subscribe for free updates on how to be a superstar communicator at executivevoice.co.uk. Hi there, this is Susan Heaton Wright speaking from Superstar Communicator. Thank you very much for tuning in today. I have continued as ever to get feedback from people and I'm so, so pleased that you are enjoying the range of topics related to communication and in particular spoken communication. Now we're coming towards the end of the year now and last time we had a really, really good podcast where I interviewed Kira Martinez about the project that I've been involved in over in Greece. And I thought that it would be quite interesting because I was actually leading the music project to talk a little bit about leadership and what I learned from it. Because you know what, listeners, everything I do, if I get feedback that's, eh, you know, not so good and it bruises my ego, I'm learning from it. And if things go well, I still try to work out what worked well and what I could do better. And I'm sure that there are plenty of you that also do this. And if you've got any tips on that that I can share with the listeners, that would be brilliant. That would be something to give back to each other. Anyway, let's get back to leadership because there are some, I don't know, when I think about it, there are all of these thoughts about leadership and um, who should be a leader and some mystique around it. There are plenty of le- people who are leadership coaches and good luck to them. Um, some, I would say, I, I'd be surprised if they could lead by the way that they communicate. And maybe that's the thing that we get reassurance from a leader if they're able to communicate clearly. But we'll continue with that thought in a moment. You know, certainly in the United Kingdom at the moment, there is this idea of, um, or an image of a leader being a white, possibly upper middle class male, um, possibly an old Etonian, because it's remarkable the number of people a number of men who are leaders and very, very influential and very visible who are Old Etonians. I'm not sure how much that is due to their their abilities to lead and how much there's a myth around that or whether they have doors open to them. That is a completely different podcast and a debate that will go on. Anyway, we can have an idea that if you are a leader, you've got to be very aggressive, very loud, my way or no way, which sadly appears to be the case at the moment in um, what's going on at Parliament, even though there's an election coming on. And yeah, I understand if there is... Um, something that's got to be done now when we're in you you know when there's a difficult time um, such as there being an emergency somebody needs needs to take the leader make a quick decision no collaboration and they quickly delegate but that person is leading Um, but it's not necessarily the best approach in leadership there can be misunderstandings about leadership. Now, I want to use the example of what I was doing last week in in Athens, because on the Saturday, there were people that came from a number of different agencies who are doing remarkable work 
with refugees in Athens in the camps or they might be organising food or accommodation or education for the children or some health support. They are all bringing an area of expertise, experience and knowledge that I don't have. Um, what I was bringing to the table really was my enthusiasm for music, my experience and expertise in delivering that, but not necessarily within refugee camp in Athens. Yeah, I've worked elsewhere in refugee camps, but not in Athens. And I wanted to make it quite clear from the word go that everybody there was of value and they had some amazing skills and experience to share. So I could have gone down the route of just doing my music from the word go, but I decided to introduce myself and do a couple of pieces to get us all involved and um, bonding with the music and then open up the, the floor, for want of a better word, so that other people could share their music, um, the styles that they did, so that we could share from that and learn from it. And that was wonderful. Um, you know, one of the things about leadership is that you have to have a vision. And I had a very clear vision about what we could do with this particular project. Um, and that was to share good practice and to be able to get a repertoire of music together that could always go be going to the camps and the children would always be familiar with those things rather than someone going in and it was different music every time and they would have to learn new things every time. So I don't think that people are born leaders. Yeah, there are some people that are more confident and they have really good communication, um, but and, and maybe they have a, a real sense of entitlement um, that they want the top job. But, but actually, it's about looking to see what's going on in that environment and what the project is. So um, I think about somebody that I met. Unfortunately, it, it was um, not the most pleasant um, appearance for me. Um, and that was one of the accountancy um, companies that, that, that actually trains accountants. And this person was leading, was, they thought they were leading a leadership programme. And she actually thought that leading a group of musicians through the Olympic Park so that they could um, perform in different parts of the Olympic Park during the Olympics, what was actually leadership. Now you and I know that that's not leadership, that's directing a group of people from one place to another. Um, and management at, at the very, very most, but probably directing people. And she thought that being aggressive and being derogatory to other people and putting other people down and being grand was leadership. But we know that that's not the case. Um, because if I had used that technique of leadership, when I was working with these other people, some of whom don't speak English as their native tongue, then everything would have fallen away from the word go. So here are my top tips, and you might have some more, and I would really love it if you feel that there's something I've missed off, that you let me know. Um, so the first one is really, really having a vision. As I mentioned before, I had a real vision for the project. It was strapped on alongside the Love Without Borders project as um, a tag along and something that when they are doing the art workshops in future, they can encourage the children to sing along. And that's a really, really good way of bonding and um, relaxing children, making them feel special. Um, I said from the very beginning that I had respect for everybody else in the room and I acknowledged them from the word go and 
I opened up the floor so that there could be open collaboration without anybody feeling that they couldn't contribute or that they didn't have something of value. I made it very, very clear that they all had something of value to contribute, however small. Now, there was one man there that didn't really didn't speak very much English, but all of a sudden he decided that he wanted to sing and he had the most beautiful baritone voice. And this was a highlight of the day for me. And he relaxed all of a sudden and he opened up and he looked so joyful and he had a terrible backstory of things that had happened to him before he'd got over to Athens. <coughs> um, <coughs> I think that collaboration is always important because as a leader, you aren't going to know everything and you are not going to be the expert of everything. Now, if I think of one or two leaders that have been quite open about delegating to other people, they, like Richard Branson, he says, I have pick people who are the best at what they do and I know that I can delegate that particular thing to them so they will go off and do that project on my behalf. That's a good leader. You push your, your ego out of the way. Other people are going to be much better than you at certain things. But one of the points of the leader as well as vision is bringing it all together. Yes, delegate, but you need to make sure that you're keeping in contact with everybody to make sure something's done. <clears throat> and having excellent communication skills is key. If you don't talk to anybody, or if you don't listen to other people, because listening is really important, you are not going to be leading very well because the people you've delegated to will feel confused or they won't feel valued. And so really think about how you are going to communicate with others. Are you going to email them or text them or are you going to arrange a call every week or you actually have a meeting at a particular time every week so to make sure that you are keeping on track with things, keeping everybody motivated, reminding them of the vision. I hope you found that interesting. I've certainly been finding it interesting considering this and I'd love to have your feedback on this. Remember that my new website is Susan my new website is superstarcommunicator.com and my new email is susan at superstarcommunicator.com. Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. You were just listening to the Superstar Communicator Show. Please leave a review on iTunes and make sure you head over to our website, executivevoice.co.uk, to subscribe to our newsletter on how to become a superstar communicator. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes where I'll share ideas to ensure you are never, ever underestimated, ignored, interrupted or undervalued again.